My brothers and sisters, God has blessed every person who has received Jesus Christ as Savior with what the book of Galatians calls grace gifts, supernatural endowments that come from the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. God wants to use these grace gifts along with your natural ability to glorify him. But there are some times when we would rather not. Didn't get any amens right now. There are some times when we'd rather do something other than what God has called and equipped us to do. And there's a man in the Bible who was just like some of us. I want to talk today for a little while about the danger of refusing your assignment. Jonah chapter 1, the danger of refusing your assignment. If you're looking for Jonah, it's after Ezekiel and Obadiah. Is a minor prophet with a major message. If you are in Micah or Malachi, back up and go the other direction. The book of Jonah, beginning at chapter 1. If you can, would you stand in honor of God's word? We'll read selected verses. The danger of refusing your assignment. Jonah chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. Call out against it, for the evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. May the Lord have mercy on our souls. Amen. The danger of refusing your ministry assignment. Brothers and sisters, there's a great command in this passage. A great command comes in the life of Brother Jonah because God has an assignment for Jonah that is unique to Jonah. God calls Jonah and just as God called Obadiah and just as God called Hosea and just as God called Jeremiah and Isaiah and Daniel, just as God called all the other prophets of the Old Testament, the Lord puts a word in the mouth of Jonah. You do know that Jonah is a prophet like the other prophets. As a matter of fact, Jonah's ministry takes place during the divided kingdom during the reign of King Jeroboam and King Uzziah. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 Jonah is the one that predicts that King Jeroboam II will uh, take over the land from the entrance of Hamath in 2 Kings 14.25 all the way down to the Sea of the Arabah, which is near the Dead Sea. Jonah is the prophet that stands and speaks for God and reminds the children of Israel that God will return the land to them during Jeroboam's reign. But God is not finished with Jonah. He has another assignment. My brother and sisters, I want to say to you that just because you have successfully completed one ministry assignment does not mean that God is through with your life. Just as the word of God comes to Elijah and Elisha and all of the other prophets, God tells Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, with a mission in mind to tell them that I'm going to overthrow the city in 40 days unless they repent. You have to understand that Nineveh was a great city. Nineveh was about the size of Ipsy and Ann Arbor put together. As a matter of fact, if you fly halfway around the world to Mosul in Iraq, uh, Nineveh sat on the other side of the Tigris River. It was a city of about 120,000 to 175 souls. And God tells Jonah at the height of Nineveh's power, go there. 
and preach. Jonah had to travel 550 miles uh, uh, to get to Nineveh. My brothers and sisters, I bring that up because his assignment required some effort. His assignment required some time. His assignment uh, uh, required some humility as well. Uh, Jonah had to understand that, that Assyria is the mortal enemy of Israel. Uh, but God said, go. Uh, it's a good time to pull out that song. I'll go. If the Lord wants somebody, here am I, send me. The book of Jonah order began with chapter 1, verse 1, go down to verse number 2, and then jump over to where Jonah preaches in Nineveh. But Jonah had some other plans. God said go there and call out against it because its evil has come up before me. I don't know if you know much about Nineveh, but Nineveh was a wicked place. Uh, the Assyrians were extremely brutal in their forms of warfare. Not only were they brutal, but, 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 but they were idolaters. They worshipped several gods. They, they were relentless and persistent in their sin. They were determined sinners. They were professional idol worshippers. They, they were, were, were merciless in the extermination of their enemies. One of their enemies is Israel. God gives Jonah a great command. Go preach to Nineveh. But, 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 Jonah. Uh, Sister Williams has another plan. Uh, Jonah's plan, we could call it gross disobedience. Because in number, verse number three, uh, God told Jonah, go, and, and, and there's a word there that ought not be in the text, much less our lives. Uh, when God says go, we ought to go. But Jonah rose not to go to Nineveh, but to flee to Tarsus. My brothers and sisters, God gives Jonah great command, but Jonah demonstrates gross obedience because when God says go to Nineveh, which is in the east, Jonah comes up with another plan to go 2,500 miles to the west. Jonah decides, he gets up from where he is at the word of God and rather than turn and start marching east, Jonah turns and starts marching west. Goes down to the seaport, finds a ship in Joppa that's headed to Tarshish and Jonah does something foolish. He flees from the presence of God. Literally, my friends, what this means is that Jonah is trying to get away from the face of God. My brothers and sisters, I've got news for you. You can run, but you can't hide. How can you hide from the one that pushed up every mountain and scooped out every valley? How can you hide from the one that humped the sun in the sky and, and the moon by night. How can you hide from the one that made every hiding place? But Jonah thinks he can get away from God. Just like some of us have tried. Some of us crawled up in a bottle trying to hide from God. Somebody crawled in a bag or a pipe trying to hide from God. Some of us are still running. We, we, we're here, but we, we've not yet uh, 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 accepted our assignment. You can run, but you can't hide. And Jonah pays the fire to get on the ship, but doesn't understand just how much he's going to have to pay. Jonah runs from God to Tarshish. Jonah runs from God. The question 
is why. Brother Curry, I want to tell you why. People. Jonah runs from his assignment because of the same reason that some of us have run from our assignment. People. Jonah knows the power of God's word. Jonah knows the assignments will get results. But Jonah doesn't want to see his enemy blessed. Some of us know the power of God in our lives. Know how God could use us. But we're afraid of people. What Jonah doesn't want is he doesn't want his enemy to be blessed. Can I tell you why God wants you to speak to your enemy? Why God wants you to love your enemy? Because the Bible said in Romans chapter 5 verse 8, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm skipping ahead. I might not ever get to chapter 3, but just in case I don't, let me drop this off with you. The reason God wants you to love your enemy is because he loves your enemy. That preacher's meddling today. I sure am. Listen, the folk that we don't like, God loves. It's dangerous to refuse your assignment. Look at God's response in verse number four. Uh, 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 Jonah takes off running the wrong direction, but God just won't leave him alone. And I got news for somebody today. He won't leave you alone. You can run, but you can't hide. God responds to Jonah's uh, 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 attempt to outrun his will by sending somebody after him. God doesn't send Gabriel. He does not send Michael. He does not send grace and mercy. God sends the wind. As a matter of fact, God does what Solomon says is the impossible. He grabs the wind and holds the wind like a spear and sees Jonah on the boat and says, I got you now. And throws the wind down on the sea after Jonah and a hurricane gets started in the sea and Jonah can't outrun God's hand. My brother and sister, you ought to be careful. It's dangerous. To refuse your assignment. The Bible said that, that it gets so bad that the ship that Jonah's on is about to break up. You remember when David was hired to play music to soothe the soul of Saul. That Saul grabbed a spear and threw it to try to pin David to the wall. But David jumped out the way. And was saved. But see, see, you can jump out the way when a man throws a spear. But when God has got you in his sights, you can run. But you just can't hide. The boat begins to get broken up. The waves begin to, 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 to rise. The storm begins to rage. And, and Jonah now has not only endangered his own life, but the lives of the people around him. My brother and sister, I have to tell you something. God sends the sea and the waves to arrest Jonah. While the boat is rocking and reeling, Jonah does not realize even what's going on because, 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 because Jonah is asleep in the belly of the boat. But verse 5 tells us, there's some professional sailors on board whose lives are being threatened by Jonah's disobedience. When we refuse our assignment, it affects everyone around us. Let me rewind that. Play it in slow-mo. When we refuse our assignment, it affects Everyone around us. Somebody's life right now is in a mess 
because you're messing with somebody who's hiding from God. And here the mariners are threatened by the storm and, and they're literally shaking in their boots because, because God is after Jonah and God is shaking up the sea and, and, and so what they begin to do is what they know to do. They begin crying out to their gods. Sister, the, 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 the word said that they, 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 they afraid they each cry out to their gods. But the storm gets worse. And their spiritual tactics fail when their gods, uh, just like the gods didn't answer uh, 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 on Mount Carmel, did not answer when Baal, the storm god, did not answer with thunder and lightning. Uh, just here, he does not answer. They drop their spirituality and resort to practicality. Sister Lisa, they start throwing everything over the board. God has thrown the sea at Jonah. Now they start throwing the cargo back at the sea. Can you see their desperation? The stuff that they're supposed to deliver to Tarshish, they're throwing overboard because they're just trying to save their lives. And somebody here today had plans for your life, but now you're just trying to make it. It's dangerous to refuse your assignment. While they are desperately fighting the sea, while all of this drama is unfolding, while they're fighting for their lives, Jonah is oblivious to how what he has done is affecting the lives of other people. Anybody know somebody like that? They bring drama to everybody else's life, but they're oblivious themselves to the damage they do in the lives of other people. Jonah is asleep. How can you sleep through a storm? I don't know how tired Jonah was, but he wasn't as tired as he was about to be. Because verse 6 tells me that the captain comes to Jonah, keep your Bible open, and asks Jonah, he said, what do you mean snoring in the bottom of the boat? The word in Hebrew means that Jonah was so asleep that he was literally snoring. Jonah snoring in the storm. Must be something wrong with his mind. Because, because some, some, some writers have even suggested that Jonah was depressed and was in a depressive state. I don't know what kind of state he was in, but, but Jonah was sleeping through the storm. Storm raging. People about to die. Jonah sleeps. The captain tells Jonah, get up. Cry out. To your God. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, your God will have mercy on us. All right, brother, this is because of what's going on. There's also great fear. The Bible said that 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 that, that they say while 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 the captain is trying to figure out what's going on, the sailors are trying to figure out as well. And so what they do is they do what they used to do back in the day, they cast lots. Let's see who the troublemaker is. Let's find out who's causing all of this problem. They, they cast lots and they, they want to know who has brought evil in their lives. I don't know how they cast lots, but when they do, the lot falls on Jonah. Here is God, the sovereign of the universe. Won't even let Jonah escape by chance. Maybe the lot will point at somebody else. But God points the finger right at Jonah and say, you are the reason. All of this trouble. And they, they start asking Jonah some pointed questions now. Who are you? What's your occupation? Where do you come from? 
What's your country? Of what people are you? They want to know who are. I almost said a bad word. <laughs> you. To cause all of these kind of problems. But man, Jonah said to them, I am a Hebrew. I fear Yahweh, the Lord God Almighty. I, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. And at this, my brothers and sisters, the soldiers, the, 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 the sailors become horrified because Jonah already told them he's running from Yahweh. And now Yahweh has showed up in the middle of the sea. How can you endanger the life of someone else with your own foolishness? Can I park here for just a second? How can parents bring drugs into their own home? and endanger the lives of their children Amen. with their foolishness. Amen. How can you bring somebody you barely know Amen. into your home and put them over your children Amen. and endanger their lives? Oh, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we bring fear in the lives of other people Amen. because we refuse to follow what God has said in his word. But I notice one thing that Jonah does not tell them. Jonah tells them his origin. Jonah tells them who he worships. But Jonah does not tell them his occupation. They ask him what his job is, but Jonah never says, I'm a prophet of the Most High God. You see, my brothers and sisters, hiding your identity will put you in trouble every time. You're a Christian. You're a child of God. God has filled you with his spirit. God has given you his word. You can't operate like ordinary folks because you're not ordinary. As a matter of fact, you're extraordinary. God gave you grace gifts. He put supernatural abilities in your soul. And you have to operate in your walk, in your calling, and your divine purpose. Amen. Jonah is disobedient, irresponsible, and unconcerned. And that's why there has to be a great sacrifice. Because when we refuse to act in our purpose, sometimes God has to get our attention. Verse number 11 said, what shall we do to you? So the sea will calm down for us. Brother and sister, there are some folk that God shows you in your life that you had to put on what a good friend of mine, Reverend Kenneth Reed, called the wave list. There's some people you had to learn how to say goodbye to. This is the last Sunday of the year. The people that bring confusion in your life, some of them you got to put on the wave list. The people that are so disobedient to God and it causes problems for you, some of them you got to put on the wave list. As a matter of fact, if you are the problem, you need to get yourself straightened out with Jesus before God puts everybody on your wave list. Amen. Jonah, we don't want to hurt you, man. But we got to get rid of you. You're creating problems for us. Don't be afraid to put some folk on the wave list. Put them in the hands of the Lord. These men don't want to be blamed for the demise of Jonah. So even though Jonah has finally spoken the truth and told them, throw me overboard and the sea will calm down. Listen, baby, throw him overboard and God <laughs> can straighten some things out. They bucking against God. They fighting against God. They just won't do right. You've been praying for them. Now it's time. Give them the boot. You see, you see, some of us are afraid to let folk go. That God has been trying to move out of our lives. Let me clarify. I'm not telling any married folks to get a divorce. You need to come to counseling. 
But some of us single folks, some of y'all single folks, because I haven't been single in, Lord Jesus, I don't know how many years. You need to put some folk in the overboard category. Some of us have some friends dragging us down with them. You need to put them in the overboard category. Can I, can I, Lord Jesus, I just got an email from heaven. You know what else I noticed? Reverend, I noticed that not only did they get rid of Jonah, but before they got rid of Jonah, they got rid of some stuff. Because some of us have some stuff in our lives that's dragging us down. Oh, Erica Badu called you a bag lady. She said, you've been dragging them bags all over the town and when inward see you coming, they take off running because you're bringing all your baggage. Baby, it's time to dump some stuff. This is the last Sunday of the year. Put it in the overboard category. Heartbreak, I'm putting it in the overboard category. My wounds, I'm putting them in the overboard category. My past. Overboard category. Haters, overboard category. You can't take old bricks to a new house and build something new. Some of us need to start over. And it takes them getting rid of Jonah. They say, oh Lord, please don't bring this to our charge. We know that Jonah is a man that comes from you. But we kick Jonah out of the boat. Please don't let his blood be on our hands. But I got some good news for you this morning. The last thing I see in here is the grace of God. Because verse number 17 said that when they threw Jonah overboard, that God sent a great fish to swallow up Jonah and keep Jonah alive for three days and three nights. That's why you can't be afraid to put some people in the overboard category. Because the God I serve can save people that have been thrown overboard. God's got a way of preserving his man alive. And even when we've been hard-headed, and even when we've been disobedient, I see God sticking out his hand in the form of a fish and telling Jonah, my life is, your life is not over. You've been sinking and you've been running from me, but I'm not through with you yet. Your assignment has not been completed. So glad today uh, that one day Jonah got uh, thrown overboard, uh, but God caught him. Uh, is there anybody here today uh, that's been in uh, the overboard category? Uh, we messed up uh, and uh, we were trifling. Uh, disobedient and uh, misunderstood uh, but aren't you glad today uh, that God caught you uh, held you in his hand uh, and wouldn't let you go uh, so glad today uh, the record is uh, that the minute they threw Jonah uh, overboard uh, the storm uh, that was raging uh, stopped in its tracks uh, the storm calmed down uh, the wind calmed down uh, my God he is uh, a storm stopping God uh, anybody know uh, about the storm stopper uh, we read about him uh, in Sunday school uh, the storms that uh, threaten us uh, the storms that uh, 
uh, would take us out. Uh, financial storm, uh, physical storm, uh, faith storm, uh, friendship storm, uh, marriage storm. Uh, I know a man uh, that can stop uh, in his storm. Uh, come here, Jesus, uh, walking along uh, the sea one night. Uh, the disciples said, I think that uh, must be a ghost. Uh, but I heard uh, Peter saying, uh, Lord, uh, if that's you, uh, call me uh, to come to you uh, on the water, uh, storm raging. Uh, but Peter uh, stepped out the boat. Uh, and the record is uh, that Peter started walking, uh, walking to Jesus. Uh, but here's what happened. Uh, it wasn't the fact uh, that Peter took his eye uh, off of Jesus. Uh, but when Peter started looking uh, at the storm raging, uh, he began to sink. Uh, I'm wondering today, uh, how does a man uh, began to sink? Uh, if you take a rock uh, and put it in water, uh, it sinks. Uh, if you take a car uh, and put it in water, uh, it sinks. Uh, the Bible said uh, that Peter uh, just started sinking. Uh, he didn't go uh, all the way down. Uh, and Peter cried out, uh, words we ought to remember, Lord, uh, save me. Uh, and Jesus grabbed him uh, and walked him back uh, into the boat. Uh, so glad uh, that he saved me. Uh, so glad uh, he put me back in the boat. Uh, so glad uh, he stopped my storm. Uh, he stopped my storm. Uh, anybody out there know uh, that God will uh, stop the storm he's a storm stopping God he's a storm stopping God and I don't care how big uh, the storm may get uh, the question is not uh, how big is the storm uh, but the question is uh, how big is your God? How big is your God? Woo! Jonah, hard-headed, disobedient, unconcerned, said, I ain't gonna do it. Goes the other direction. But God, just won't let him go. Somebody in here, turn your back on your assignment. You said, I'm not going to do it. And you've been sinking. <laughs> Call my daddy and tell him I'm going down slow. You've been sinking. God said the sinking days are over just answer the call to your assignment and i'll take you out of what i put you in you can run you can run sooner or later you get tired of running god will put you in administrative segregation if he's got to put you in the belly of a way, he'll put you in the super housing unit. God will lock you down until you say mercy. Somebody here today needs to give up. Throw your hands up. Say, I'm tired of being tired. I need Jesus to be the leader of my life. I've been trying to navigate different ways here and there. But I want Jesus to be the leader of my life. Somebody's wondering, well, why do I need him? The Bible said, all have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. The Bible said, the wages of sin. 
The paycheck for sin is death. But I got good news. The gift of God is eternal life. Let me explain real quick. See, pay is what we earn. Gift is what God gives that we don't deserve. And you and I don't deserve the gift of God in Christ Jesus, but it's free to us. All we have to do is receive it. Listen, if they, if they were giving away money at the bank, we'd show up. Well, we'd show up. We'd line up around the block and wait for that. Well, I've got something better than money. It's called Jesus. Savior. Deliverer. Counselor. Prince of Peace. Mighty God. Won't you receive him today? Won't you come? Receive Jesus today. If you're in this house and you've been running from him, it's time to stop running from him and run to him. Amen. Amen. Let him do with your life what he wants to. Uh -huh. Come on and sing, saints. Won't you come today?